All right, welcome to this video on graphing exponential functions. We're going to look at two types of functions, um, exponential functions. One is, as you can see, is a growth, and that's referring to as you move from left to right that the graph is going up. And so we call that a growth exponential function versus a decay, which as you read from left to right again, you're going to go to uh, go down. Okay, and um, examples of a growth. Uh, exponential growth type function might be some kind of a financial situation where you put money in the bank and it accrues interest over time. It's growing exponential versus some kind of a decay might uh, be something that is shrinking over time. Uh, maybe it's, uh, I'm thinking of, uh, uh, well, when I hear, hear the word decay, I think of tooth decay. And your tooth starts off solid, and then as decay sets in, it, it de uh, decreases in size, even way your tooth. And over time, it gets closer and closer to nothing. Okay, so decay is where something is shrinking, growth is where something is increasing. All right, we're gonna look at a two. Uh, I'm sorry, a three-step process. That should be obvious from this uh, learning card we got. One, we're gonna table. Uh, we're gonna use the table function to create x, y coordinates that we can then plot. Step two. Once we've plotted the graph, then we're going to describe it in terms of certain characteristics, the x-intercepts, y-intercepts, something that might be new to you called an asymptote, which is just a line that it is either coming down to or coming from, and uh, the end behaviors. As x goes out, um, as we move out to the right here on the x values, what's happening to the y values here is going up. Um, and as we move to the left, or x goes to negative infinity, what's happening to the y values when they're coming down. They come down to a certain value, and we're going to be specific about how we do that. So we might come back to this uh, learning card in a little while. Here's a decay again. We're going to do a table, create the table values. We're going to plot those carefully because they've got some decimals in them, and then we're going to describe it in terms of certain characteristics. All right, so let's take a look at this first one. Um, here's an example. Um, if you think you know what you're doing, you might as well you know, go ahead and do it, but I haven't really talked about too much of it. But I'm going to pull up my calculator. I've got this TI30XS here, and I'm going to put, I'm going to hit the table function. So you, now you kind of know where I've got that idea of table, plot, and describe. So I hit the table key, and it's allowing me to put this in. Now, f of x is the same as y. We treat it the same. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this 5. Uh, parentheses, when I do that, the calculator knows it's times um, 2, um, and I'm going to raise that. I'm going to use this uh, caret is what it's referred to, but it's raising it up to an exponent, and that is x, so I'm using the x button, plus 2. Now I have to use the right cursor key to get out of that exponent feature, and then plus 2 at the end. Okay, so that's what I mean by hitting the table key. And uh, here I can start it. I'm going to start it at zero. That's kind of where I usually start. And I might adjust it as we go through. I'm going to go up by one. So this is talking about the x values. And I'm going to leave it on auto. Hit OK. So I had to enter, enter, enter through that several times. Now I've got a list of my x, y values. And let me move this over here so I can see it. And I'm going to shrink my, my screen down just a little bit here. All right, so because uh, I want to record some of these x, y values. Okay, so here are my x, y values. Um, I've got 0. I'm going to start down here because it looks like I'm going to need some negative values. 0, 22. I won't even be able to put that on my graph. It's just out of range of my graph. 1, 42, 282. Okay, so I need more data values. So I'm going to go up. Uh, well, oh, I'm going to go negative on the x values, but I'm using this up arrow key to get some other values. So I've got... Um, let me go back here, negative 1, I had 12, uh, negative 2, I've got 7, and negative 3, I've got a fraction, uh, 9 over 2, you might know that as 4 and a half, but if you didn't know it as 4 and a half, I do, um, you could um, hit this toggle switch, well you have to cursor over to the 9 over 2 first, and see it listed down here, and hit the toggle switch down here, and it will tell you exactly what that is as a decimal. So it's 4.5. As I scroll up, and there's still some fractions, hit the toggle switch, it's down to 3.25. Let me add that one in there. Negative 4. Sorry, I had to put it down the bottom here. 3.25. 
a negative 5. Again, I'm toggling 2.65. Negative 5, 2.65. I'm just going to cut it off at uh, two decimal places or round up. I'm sorry. Rounding at two decimal places. I continue to go up negative 6. In fact, as I go up, you'll notice that eventually these fractions are going to become, they're going to be written as decimals there. They finally start getting written as decimals. And now what I wanted to show you by doing this was that as I continue to go back into further and further negative x values, I'm getting closer and closer to what number for y? 2. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind. So I'm going to put this uh, negative 21, and it looks like 2.00009537. Okay, I didn't really care so much about that. I'm going to have a hard time graphing it anyway, but I wanted to bring that up in just a little while. Okay, so now I'm ready to um, plot some of these. As I mentioned, 0, 22 is like way up here. Negative 2. I'm sorry. Um, might help if I... Okay, I'm sorry. That one, like 142. I'm not going to be able to graph these. They're going to go off my chart. So negative 1, 12. Negative 1, 12. Negative two, seven. Negative three, four and a half. Uh, negative four, so I'm down here, negative four, 3.25. Four, 3.25 is about right there. Negative five, 2.63, about right there. And remember, as, and you can start to see the pattern here. It's coming down, coming down, and eventually, what was it getting close to? Two. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, very carefully try this. I'm working with this tablet that doesn't allow me to, to do this too well, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Okay. All right, that's about the best I can do on this uh, ta drawing tablet that I'm working with. All right. Now I have, um, I've done the table. I've plotted the points. And now I'm going to describe it. And here's what I want to describe on these things. Is I want to describe, uh, one, the y-intercept. And I can tell that from... This value right here, it's 0, 0,22. That's where it crosses the y-axis, and there it is up there. Now, what else do I want to do? I want to do the um, this thing called the asymptote. Hi, Thomas, the Atrium, Ruin, Kelly, Brandon, All right, the asymptote and Andy is just the line that this graph is coming down to, coming close to, but never quite touching. So let me put a line in here and I just want to put that line on there. I'm going to put that line right there because that's the line that it's coming close to but never quite touching. And the equation of that line is y equals 2. It's a flat line um, and it's coming through at 2. The value of y is always 2 on that line so that's why we characterize it with this equation y equals 2. Okay and then the other uh, main thing, uh, well, two things. I'm gonna, domain and range are two values that we would look at. The domain is all of the possible x values. And basically, all these graphs, the possible x values are going to be from negative infinity uh, to infinity. In other words, um, another way of writing that is all real numbers. Uh, any real number will work. You can put any number in here in this x value and it will give you a y value or an f of x. All right, now the range, you can see, uh, the range is referring to the y values, and you know, look up here at four, okay, yep, it's here. Look at six, yep, there's a value. Look at eight, yep, there's a value. But if you go below two, it's not, there's nothing there, okay? So the range is from, um, from uh, two up to infinity. Okay, and I want you to notice I put that parenthesis around there because it's not including two. This thing is going to get very, very close to two, but never quite touching two. Okay, so. All right, so um, the last two things that we're going to look at are the, uh, as x approaches infinity, what is happening to y? What is it approaching? And as x is approaching negative infinity, what is happening to y. Okay, so think about this. As x, as we're going this way with the x values, or look at our chart here, as we go up with our x values, what is happening to y? And, and this might be a good way to do it. As I go up here, so I'm going higher in my x values, what is going on with y? Okay, the numbers are getting larger, larger, 
larger, larger. Okay, so as x goes towards infinity, y is going towards, well, some really large number, or we call it the infinity as well. Okay, so as x, this is another a numerical way of saying that x is getting bigger, y is getting bigger. Okay, and then as x is approaching negative infinity, so if we're going backwards on the calculator, um, I'm going back to negative numbers, um, or you know negative infinity. So as I reduce the size of x, what's happening to y? Well, it's reducing in size too. So is it going to negative infinity? Well, that's what a lot of people are thinking. But as you go down this list, when they start turning into decimals, what's it getting close and closer to? Well, look at the y values. They continue to get closer and closer and closer to two, but never quite hitting it. So we're going to say it approaches. That's what the arrow means. It approaches two. All right. All right, I'm um, going to go a little faster on this next one, so you may want to pause it here, give this one a shot. This is, um, uh, let's see how it goes, but I'm going to go kind of fast on this. All right, so this next one, I'm clearing my calculator, getting back to this. I'm going to put this in here because we're going to do the table, and I'm putting this in. Um, um, as I'm putting this in, I'm just bumping this up and this one had to get out of that exponent um, so then I'm doing plus two plus two right there sorry for that interruption all right and uh, I said I'm going to start at zero each time and uh, let's see what I get. So I've got a uh, graph here. I'm going to create my xy chart. And of course, I didn't have to really write this down. I could just work off the calculator, I guess. Um, but 0, 12, 1, 7, 2. That's 4.5. How did I know that? Well, if I didn't know it, I could go down here and toggle. And I've got the 4.5. I could keep going down. And toggle, I can see that's 3.25. So I got 3, 3.25. 4 is coming down here to 2.65. 2.65. These numbers seem like very similar to the last one we did. I'm just kind of going in the opposite direction. 5 is 2.3, and so forth. And I'm going to continue down this list and toggle a few of them. 2.07. And they stop becoming, when you start becoming decimals, you can see it's getting down to two. So it's very similar to our last graph. Okay. But uh, let me expand my window here. All right. So uh, 0, 12. So we did the table. Now we're plotting 1, 7, 2, 4, and a half, 3, 3.25, and 4, 2.65. And here, then it's coming down, it's coming down. You can see it's going to come down close to, again, on this particular one, y equals uh, 2. Okay, so I'm going to draw the red line there. This is not always the case, but I want you to see that plus 2 right there. If I flip back to the previous one, it had a plus 2 there. So that is an indicator that plus or minus out on the side. That really is the clue for your asymptote. Okay, so the asymptote on this one, a strange word. It's saying, what line is it approaching but never quite hitting? It's the line of y equals 2. All right. And uh, probably won't do very good with this. Ah, sorry. All right. This uh, tablet didn't work so great on this. <clears throat> x-intercept. Well, I'm sorry, the y-intercept. There's the y-intercept. It doesn't have an x-intercept because it's never going to quite touch the x-axis. As um, the domain, pretty much for all these um, growth and decay functions is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range is going to start at the asymptote and go up, in this case, to infinity. So I'm going to put parentheses around there because it does not include 2. So that was my range. Uh, as x approaches infinity, y is doing what? Well, look at it. As x is approaching infinity, so as we go out here, y is approaching 2. As x approaches negative infinity, in other words, as we go back this way, y is going way up. And it's going to, there's not a specific number, it's to infinity. Um, 
and this is a decay model versus the other one was a growth model because this one is coming down. All right, uh, I think we've got two more. Let me just flip over here and see. Yeah, okay. This one, uh, you can pause it at this point. Um, but again, I'm going to go kind of fast through these. So, right, I'm at my table 4 times 0.5 raised to the x power. That's the same thing as half. So I could have put it in the half. I could have put it in the uh, fraction, but I did not. All right, and I'm just going to work directly from my calculator to this. So I got 0, 4, by the way, that's almost my y-intercept, 1, 2, 2, 1, get those x, y things straight now. It's going to continue. It's going to go like half here and a fourth there and so forth, and it's going to get really, really close to 0. So you can see the line is coming down like this. This is going to be a decay model. And let's see, what's that like? Yeah, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, and so forth. And you can see that the number is getting closer and closer and closer, the y value, to what? Well, it looks like it's going, getting really close to zero, but never quite hitting it. Okay, so the asymptote is going to be y equals zero. That's the asymptote. And Let's see, the domain on this is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range is going to be from 0 up to infinity. That's referring to the y values because it covers all the y values as long as it's positive. Um, as x approaches infinity, y is approaching, so as we're going this way on the graph, y is approaching 0. As x is approaching negative infinity, in other words going the other way, y is approaching, well, what's y doing? y continues to get larger and larger and larger, so we're just going to characterize it as positive infinity. So this one was a decay. I want you to notice that this was a fraction here, and uh, it did not have anything out in the end, plus zero. By the way, that was the same thing as our asymptote. Okay. Last one. Uh, this one is going to be, well, you may pause it before I say it, but uh, this one is going to be a growth uh, because of this, uh, it's not a fraction between 0 and 1. It's a greater than 1, so it's going to be a growth model. And I'm going to pull up this table, clear that out. I've got 3 times 2 raised to the x minus 1. Jump out of that, put minus 2. That minus 2 at the end, that should tell you something that should tell you that this thing is going to get close and close to negative 2, but never quite touch it. And um, so I'm going to start back here at about uh, negative 3. Let's see what that does. All right, that's negative 1 point. So negative 3, negative 3 is uh, negative 1.8. Negative 3, negative 1.8, so it's somewhere around there. Negative 2 go down here and I toggle that because I don't know what 13 eighths is. has a decimal is negative 1.6 and negative 1 is negative 5 fourths which I do know I think is negative 1.25. I toggle that. So it's somewhere right around here. Continue. Let me scroll down a few. So 0 is at negative 1 half. 1 is at 1. Now we're starting to see that exponential growth going, kicking in. 2 is at 4. 3 is at 10. And so forth. Okay, so you get to see our basic exponential growth. All right, and it was coming close to y equals negative 2. So the asymptote is y equals negative 2. As x is approaching infinity, y is approaching, well it's going up as well, it's going up to infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, y is approaching, it was going down towards negative 2. So again, that asymptote and this, as x approaches negative infinity, are turning out to be the same thing. Uh, let's see what else we have. I think that was about it. Alright, enjoy.